I wasted weeks of my time and nearly $1,000 trying to find the perfect cloud storage solution for my team until I discovered this hidden gem that most businesses overlook. Today I'm revealing whether Soho WorkDrive is the solution your business has been searching for or just another overhyped cloud storage service. If you've been frustrated by Google Drive's limited sharing options, OneDrive's clunky interface, or Dropbox's expensive business plans, you'll want to see what I've discovered when I pushed Zoho WorkDrive to its limits. From unique team collaboration features to surprising security gaps, this review covers everything you need to know before making the switch. So let's dive in. First, let's talk about the biggest benefits Soho WorkDrive brings to the table. Seamless integration with Soho's entire ecosystem. WorkDrive isn't just a standalone storage solution, it's designed to be tightly integrated with all other Soho apps, like everything from CRM, project management, email, accounting, HR software, no need for complex third-party connections, everything just works together. But fair warning, if your team relies heavily on tools outside the Soho ecosystem, you may find integrations to be a tad limited. We've established that WorkDrive thrives in Soho's ecosystem. Duh. But what does it actually do as your team's workspace? The answer is three things. First, online file synchronization. Second, structured storage, thanks to the team folders. And third, live collaboration. Let's start with collaboration because it's arguably the most important aspect of any business cloud storage solution. When it comes to the actual mechanics of sharing and collaboration, WorkDrive provides impressively granular control. For internal team collaboration, you can share with team members via email, setting specific access levels for each user. Permissions can be applied to individual files, folders, or entire team workspaces. External sharing works through general generated links, which can be password protected and given expiration dates. You can also disable downloads or even request viewer data before granting access. What I found particularly useful during testing was WorkDrive's ability to create multiple external share links for the same document, each with different permission settings. The system even tracks who has viewed or downloaded your shared files. And this is huge if you want to have different parties accessing different projects for or the same project folder or files. File synchronization works essentially as expected with instant syncing across devices, but there is one limitation to note, file size caps. Starter plan users are limited to 10 gigabyte per files and team plan users to 50 gigabyte per files. And even business plan subscribers face a 250 gigabyte file size cap. Well, this is enough for most users, but if you work with extremely large video files, or massive data sets, this could be a deal breaker. So it's just something you need to be aware of. On a more positive note, WorkDrive implements both selective sync and block level sync. Selective sync lets you choose exactly which folders to store locally, saving precious space on devices with limited storage. And block level sync means only the changed portions of files are uploaded during updates. So when you edit a single slide in a 100 megabyte presentation, only the modified data is transferred saving significant time and bandwidth. Let's talk about WorkDrive's integration with Soho's productivity suite. From within WorkDrive, you can access a comprehensive set of content creation tools that rival what Google and Microsoft offer. Soho Writer is their document creation tool. It comes with Zia, an AI assistant that provides real-time suggestions for grammar, readability, and style. I found Zia surprisingly helpful for polishing my work without disrupting my writing flow. Writer also also includes built-in document generation, digital signature capabilities, very useful if you have to sign contracts, and form automation tools. It also offers three tools that are usually found as separate applications, a plagiarism checker, a PDF editor, and a grammar checker. For spreadsheets, there is Soho Sheets, which offers all the functionality you'd expect, plus some unique collaboration features. For example, while Excel and Google Sheets let you comment and share, Soho Sheets also lets you start a group discussion with 
your teammates inside the spreadsheet using the chat option. You also have Soho Show to handle presentations. It comes with theme designs that I found more versatile than many competitors for different use cases like startup pitches, quarterly sales meetings, and even boardroom huddles. What also stood out to me about Show was that all relevant options automatically appear on the right panel based on the specific task you're performing. This is in contrast to Google Slides where you often have to dig through multiple layers of menus to find the option you need. Another impressive feature in Show is the ability to add live Twitter feeds or X feeds to your slides that automatically update as you present, assuming you have an internet connection, of course. For team meetings, Soho Meeting provides integrated video conferencing similar to Google Meet or Microsoft Teams, keeping all your communication within the same ecosystem. Beyond these productivity apps, Soho offers dozens more native apps, all easily accessible through a menu in the right corner of your screen. And these include sales and marketing tools, finance apps, email, collaboration solutions, plus dedicated apps for customer service, HR, legal compliance, security, and IT management. So clearly wants you to embrace their ecosystem, but they haven't completely closed the door on third-party tools. And obviously there's also the danger once you start with Soho, it's very easy to get tempted to use all of their features because it's so easy, but then faster than you can even look, you are locked into their ecosystem as well and it's very hard to change. For teams that rely on tools outside the Soho ecosystem, WorkDrive offers some key third-party integrations. You get Microsoft Office connectivity for Windows users, a Gmail extension for saving attachments directly to WorkDrive, and Zapier integrations for connecting to hundreds of other apps. I particularly appreciated the WordPress integration, which lets you publish content directly to your website without ever leaving Soho writer. Let's talk about usability. This is where Zoho takes a notably different approach from competitors like Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive. Unlike these services, there isn't a single WorkDrive app you download to your device. Instead, Zoho has split WorkDrive functionality across three desktop apps, each serving a specific purpose. This gives you a more basically more flexibility, but does require a bit more initial setup to understand how the pieces fit together. Let's break down the three main desktop applications so offers for WorkDrive. First off, there is WorkDrive TrueSync, available for Windows and Macintosh users. TrueSync creates a virtual drive on your computer that represents your WorkDrive storage. What makes TrueSync special is that it doesn't actually download all your files to your device. Your files appear in your file explorer, but they remain in the cloud until you open them. When you open a file, it downloads it temporarily and any changes you make sync back to the cloud automatically. And once you're done, the file is removed from local storage while remaining accessible through the virtual drive. That's super convenient. Using TrueSync is intuitive. After installation and login, all your work drive content appears on your drive as virtual folders. Simply drag and drop files between your local storage and the virtual hard drive, and your changes sync immediately to the cloud and become available to the team members with the appropriate permissions, obviously. You can create a file using Soho Writer, Sheet, or Show using the TrueSync app. On your menu bar, click the New button and select the type of file you'd like to create. The second desktop option is WorkDrive Sync, which is a solution for Linux users and those who prefer a more traditional approach. Unlike TrueSync's virtual drive, Sync downloads complete copies of your files locally and will take up more storage space on your computer, obviously. If you're working with limited internet connectivity or need guaranteed access to files without an internet connection, this might be your preferred option. The third desktop app is WorkDrive Genie. Genie functions as a bridge between your cloud storage and desktop apps. When you want to edit a file stored in WorkDrive, Genie lets you open it directly in your preferred third-party desktop app without manually downloading it first. When editing a file stored in other cloud storage services like OneDrive, Google Drive, or pCloud, you typically need to download it, make your edits, save it, and then upload the new version. With Genie, you can make your changes in the app, save as normal, and those changes are automatically synced back to the cloud version. You can edit any kind of file with Genie. Text, image, audio, video, CAD, or code. As long as you have a compatible app installed on your laptop, you can set your changes to be automatically uploaded to WorkDrive every time you save a file from your desktop app. 
For mobile users, WorkDrive offers apps both in iOS and Android. These apps provide a clean, intuitive interface that's highly customizable. You can switch between dark and light mode, and you can pick a theme, like a color theme. But for your account, you choose from five different font styles and set a default view for your folders, just to name a few features that, that you can use here to personalize your application. And finally, there's a web version, which is where the most complete experience happens. You've got two primary spaces, team folders for collaboration and my folders for your personal files. You can create either private or public team folders. The public team folders are accessible to everyone on your team, allowing all members to browse documents, participate in discussions, and contribute without barriers. And private team folders, on the other hand, restrict access to team members who have been specifically invited to collaborate. I want to touch on security and privacy. This is where WorkDrive shows some strengths, but... <laughs> also has some notable limitations. For encryption, WorkDrive uses 256-bit AES at rest and SSL and TLS during transit. It offers single sign-on using Soho Directory and supports multi-factor authentication through various methods such as SMS, time-based OTPs, Touch ID, push notifications, smartphones, or QR code. Business plan users get additional security features like app access management, device management, data administration, and the ability to transfer ownership of files and folders. However, when it comes to privacy, WorkDrive falls short compared to more privacy-focused competitors. The biggest issue is that Soho maintains control of your encryption keys, with the exception of Soho Mail, meaning the company could theoretically access your data. In contrast, services like Sync.com and pCloud offer client-side encryption, where only you hold the encryption keys. On the plus side, their privacy policy claims that they do not sell user information for advertising and never made money by showing other people's ads and never will. They collect info like name and contact information, what features and settings to use. Well, you know, the, the basics that any service would do. I honestly found this privacy policy remarkably straightforward. They avoid tech jargon in favor of clear and simple explanations about what data they collect, why they collect it, and who they share information with. The company complies with GDPR and HIPAA and other privacy regulations, and they operate data centers worldwide in the US, Europe, Canada, India, Saudi Arabia, Australia, Japan. And when you sign up, you're assigned a data center based on your location, which affects which privacy laws apply to your data. Why is this important? Well, some countries like the US under section 702 of FISA, allow government agencies to access certain data without a warrant. If that concerns you, you'll want to know where your data resides. If you want to know which countries actually protect your data, we did a video breaking down the best national privacy laws that you can check out in the description box below. Let's talk speed. I ran Soho Drive through the same rigorous testing protocol we use for all cloud storage services to evaluate, to evaluate its speed fairly. We transferred a 5 gigabyte test folder of mixed file types and various file sizes on a 1 gigabit per second connection from our virtual server in Dublin. First, we tested Soho with the connection throttled to 100 megabits per second to ensure a stable speed. And then we ran completely unthrottled tests to see how well Soho takes advantage of fast connections, really fast connections. like. 1 gigabit. On the 100 megabit test, uploads average just over 8 minutes. And to put that into perspective, this is roughly a minute and a half slower than a max speed. So decent, but not really great. Download performance was slightly better. Our test folder downloaded in a little under 8 minutes. There are faster options available, but it's still perfectly respectable. Where so really disappointed me was the unthrottled speed test. The upload and download times were only a few seconds better, and I observed that the client seems to cap out at around 12 megabits megabytes per second, which is around 10% of what a 1 gigabit per second connection is basically capable of. Pricing. Um, honestly, check out their pricing page. I mean, you get the drill, but here's just a rough rundown of their plans. These plans are quite affordable for what you get. And if you look at the, the cloud storage for business space, we're starting with the individual plans with five gigabytes of storage. It's not the most generous free tier, but then again, it's free. For teams, there are three paid plans, starter, team, and business ranging from one terabyte to five terabyte, and you can get additional storage as needed. And for most plans, you'll need to register a minimum of three users, and pricing is between three to 10 per user 
depending on, on the plan. So if you get the five terabyte business plan and have at least three users, you're looking at 30 bucks per month, and then potentially additional storage needs that you need to upgrade to. Compared to mainstream options like the Google Workspace or Microsoft 365, Soho Work Drive offers compelling value in my opinion. There are some caveats though. Storage is shared among team members rather than allocated per user, and additional storage is relatively expensive. In some cases, upgrading to the next plan tier makes more sense than purchasing the, the add-ons. After all, so what's the, what's the verdict? Is Soho Work Drive worth it? Overall, for businesses, I'd say yes. Work Drive makes the most sense if you're already using or planning to use other Soho apps. But be aware of vendor lock-in, right? It seems very convenient that Soho offers all these other applications, CRMs, HR features, uh, messaging, video, chat, email, everything. So it's very convenient to just go ahead and use everything they offer because you already know the ecosystem. But if you ever decide to use a different app or service, it might be quite difficult to extract your business information out of the, the Soho web. The seamless integration between WorkDrive and Soho's productivity suite creates this cohesive system that just works great for team collaboration and workflow. And don't get me wrong, you can certainly just go ahead and, and dive straight in. The pricing is also very competitive, especially for small to medium-sized teams on a budget. The user interface is also intuitive, so people will learn quickly to adopt to this new system if you have team members that are, let's say, less tech savvy. And the performance is reliable, so all good on that front. You also don't have to worry about switching from your current cloud provider. WorkDrive includes a built-in migration tool specifically designed to ease the transition from other platforms. How gracious of them, right? I know. <laughs> Currently, it supports direct migration from Google Workspace, Dropbox Business Plans, and Microsoft 365 Business Standard. So you'll need to submit a request to enable the migration tool for your account, and once so, a support team validates a request, the tool will be enabled in your WorkDrive account, and from there, you can handle the entire migration process yourself. It's pretty easy and straightforward. What really sets so apart from many competitors is their proactive approach to customer support. If you encounter any confusion with a migration or any other um, aspect of the platform, you can reach out to their team for a free consultation. And good luck reaching someone at Google or Microsoft. I mean, that takes usually a very long time. During my testing, I received a phone call from a Soho representative just a few hours after creating my account, asking if I need help with anything specific. They they also emailed me a detailed help document, and having that personalized support removes much of the anxiety that typically comes with switching cloud providers, especially when you're dealing with all that sensitive business data that, have you, that you've lying around. However, WorkDrive isn't the perfect solution for everyone. If maximum privacy and unlimited file sizes are important to you, services like Sync.com would be the wiser choice, and they also have excellent unlimited business plans, so you might want to check them out as well. And that wraps up our Soho Work Drive review. If you found this review helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more tech talk. Drop a comment below with your own experiences using Work Drive or any questions you might have. I'm here to help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.